Hi everybody, Vigorous Rapscallion here with a quick update to my uh, shootable target video. So a couple of things changed in the last update. Uh, they changed how these trigger zones work and that's going to affect how all of your setups work. Uh, they also added this new clamp gizmo which is really useful for the shootable targets. I'm going to go over that second. We're going to start with how the trigger zones change because that's going to be affecting a lot of people's existing setups. It used to be we got an output of a 1 each time this pinged. It would just ping that 1 once. Now we're getting what sort of appears to be a big old nonsense number. It's not, it's actually an object tag, but uh, that's sort of outside the scope of our use. I might go over it in a later video, but for now, since these are just basic tutorials, you probably just want this to be a one. Uh, we just want to set it to a one rather than using the object tag because that might change um, when you reinitialize the room and things like that. So we don't want to deal with that. We just want to have a one instead of this big number. And that's super easy to do using a comparer chip. You're not even going to have to hook up a variable to it. By default, what's happening right now is this is checking if the input is equal to zero. Well, that's great. It is. So let's just go ahead and connect it up. So this is once again from our win exiting trigger zone um, ping here. So now it's going to be comparing to zero. Right now it is equal to zero, so we're getting an output of one from there. And uh, this one, our else case, is not true, so it's outputting a zero. However, as soon as this is no longer equal to zero, we're going to get a ping of a one from there. Let's go ahead and make sure that works. Let's set up a little combinator to hold our score so we can make sure it works in those setups. Remember, we're connecting from the else case, loop it back so it holds the value, bring it over here to our output so we can watch what's going on, and let's see if it works now. Great. So that's a really quick way to go back and retrofit your existing shootable targets or anything you had set up pinging using one of these trigger zones that's now not working because of the new update. Um, next, I want to talk about the clamp gizmo. It's definitely a better way to do this than the, item, or the tool cleanup setting. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So before we were using the tool cleanup and settings to uh, reset this, you can see I've got that turned off now. So uh, that worked pretty well, but you know, it does take a second to reset. It'd be nicer if it was instantaneous. And uh, there's a few other issues with the tool cleanup setting with uh, player griefing and things like that. This is just gonna work a little bit better. So this is the clamp gizmo. It uh, w does exactly what it sounds like it does. It clamps things in place. So now that basketball's cl clamped in place, I can't move it, I can't shoot it. By default, this thing is clamped. It's false state, it's zero state equals clamped. So we don't want that because we can't shoot this thing right now. It's not gonna go anywhere. We can't get any more points. Uh, we want that to be set to 1. Luckily, our setup already sort of has that ingrained in it. You can see this 0, since it is equal to 0, we're getting a true output from our comparison chip. So we can just go ahead and grab that, hook it up to our clamp here, and there we go. And now it's resetting. You can see it resets a lot quicker than the item cleanup. You can use a uh, timer tool if you want it to take longer. Uh, so yeah, it's a better option for a lot of reasons. But uh, let's say that this isn't the sort of setup you're dealing with, you know, you don't want to have this comparer chip, or say you just want to make it so that ball stays in place, and like if a player tries to take it out of a certain area, it'll go back to where it was, because that's a little better than using tool cleanup for the same effect. So that's really easy to do, we're just going to use a not gate instead, let's get our booleans out. So let's get this facing us and set it to not. Now remember, our not gate is just a simple switching gate. It's just going to change a 0 to a 1 and vice versa. So right now we're getting a 0 from this when exiting trigger zone. Let's bring it back to our not gate and plug it in. Uh, we're going to need to disconnect this because we're going to hook something else up to it and it can only handle one connection in its input. So now we're getting an output of a 1 from here. There we go. And uh, now any time this, uh, this becomes a 1, it's going to switch to a 0 and reclamp. So any time this leaves the trigger zone, it is going to reset. So that's how you do it. Just a different way to do it if you'd prefer to use that rather than the comparison chip. Okay, so that should uh, fix any problems you're having after the new update. Uh, thanks so much for watching and have a nice day.